So, you're a beginner in video editing. I don't know how to manipulate and animate your text graphics. Well, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to teach you the basics of text animation, from manipulating and styling up your text, to reviewing your text using objects, then to review your text using a subject in your video. So without much further to do, let's dive right into Premiere Pro. Step 1, let's get started with adding the basic text and styling it up. So, I can select my text tool down here, or simply press T for the keyboard shortcut. I can click and hold it down to see the other options to like type vertically. I'm going to select the normal text tool, then I'm going to type in a text. After adding up the text, it's time for us to style it up. And to style this up, we have two options. Either we use this workspace, which is all panels, or we can click right here for the workspace. Then we choose caption and graphics, because in Premiere Pro, Text is recognized as graphics. So under here we can we have all the properties that we need to like manipulate this this text. So this is an option that you can use. Or if like for example you are working with another workspace like all panels, like how I do it, you can choose to add in the essential graphics panel, which you can manipulate the text. And so if you don't have this essential graphics panel activated, you can go under the Windows tab then you're going to find all the panels that you need to work with. And for the essential graphics, we have it here and that's why I have the tick beside it. So I'm going to open up the essential graphics. You click on the text, because if you don't click on the text, let's say I click out on the text, you won't have all the properties of the text layer. But if you click on the text, you have all the properties that you need. And starting from here, we can center this up, that's horizontally and vertically, to be at the center. Then we can either also align it, all of these things are to align, and we have all the properties. So if you're someone who has worked with Adobe Illustrator before, you'll be familiar with all of these properties. So we have all the things that we need to style it up, like the scale to position it so we can position all of the text and stuff like that then we have the scale property which we can unchain this to just change one dimension and stuff like that so you can play around with all of these properties and see what you can come up with this is the opacity property and stuff like that then for these styles it's another property on its own for another video which i'm going to get into it then we have the font type which you can choose right here and we can just manipulate everything here, increase the font size or reduce it. Then we have all of the alignments here, so you can either align it at the left, right, center and stuff like that. Moving forward, we have all of these like to increase the spacing in between the letters or if you had multiple text layers or let's say the text on top and below, we can increase the spacing in between. So just play around with all of these like I said and you'll come up with great results. Moving forward, we have the appearance and for the appearance, we have the few stroke background and shadow. So that's really few. We can give this a few like, let's say a bright yellow color, then we move down to the stroke and for the stroke let me set this to the width to about let's say three or let me increase it to five then for the oh, let's even take it more further to like then then we can change the color so that it will be more visible so let me give it a red color this is just for visibility's sake one other thing again you can add in another stroke again then let's set this to about let's say 20 and change the pro the color to about this to yeah green so this is just to tell you that you can add in multiple stroke layers on top of the same text layer then for the background it's pretty easy we just like give it a background let me give this like uh let's say blue I know this will be somehow odd, but here, there we have the opacity for the background layer, which you can turn it all the way up. And for the margin, you can increase this to like 10 or even 20, depending on what you're going for. So you see 10 is not really uh, noticeable. So let me just use a slide bar and you can see that. And we can also make this to be rounded and stuff like that. We also have the shadow and everything. There are a lot of properties here that you can work with. And let me show you one other trick that you can use for your text animations. So for example, if you want to like use just the stroke lines of the text, the way you can create this is, first, let me re remove all of these things because I don't really need it. I don't need this stroke. I just need one stroke layer and I'm going to change this to white and hit on okay so one way to do this is you can just like 
uncheck the fill layer and you have the stroke that you want to work with another way is you can use this mask with text you click on it then you click on mask only fill so this will mask out the fill layer and you will be left with the stroke that's just a fun way to like do it but the easiest way is just to like uncheck the fill but here Premiere Pro gives you a lot of options to work with. I'm not manipulating and styling the text. You can just go ahead and and play around with all of these options and you'll come up with something great. So next we have animating this text layer. And I'm just going to do a basic text animation for this. For the next animations that I'm going to show you, I'm going to go detailedly on how to animate your text. So with this, I'm just going to come to the effect controls, then move down to the vector graphic, to the vector motion. We have we, we are going to have all of these properties here, and we have the position and scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the position. So I'll set the first keyframe by clicking on this stopwatch icon. I make sure that my playhead is at the start of this layer. That's where I want to start the animation animation from then I'm going to move a little bit ahead let's say around here and then I'll click again on this here to add a keyframe so keyframes are just like markers that tells uh, the graphics what to do at a particular time so if I set like a marker here that I'm telling these graphics to be at this position at this time then if I move ahead in time then I move this let's say slightly below I'm telling these graphics to move here at this time and at this marker so i'm going to play this for you to see and let me take this even much further by bringing this somewhere around here or better still i can reverse this keyframe so i have this first keyframe here at the bottom there we have this second keyframe at the center so with this you're going to see that it's just going to slide in like so and you can see that the animation is very static and to make it be more interesting i'm going to introduce easing your keyframes so to ease your keyframes there are two ways that you can do it you can just simply right click then you go to temporal interpolation and we have all of these options like ease in ease out and auto bezier and it's going to do the job for you but as a beginner you need to know it detailedly so i'm going to open this up and make sure that this keyframe is selected then i'll zoom in so that i can see what i'm working with clearly so you see the two keyframes and you see these handles so this handle determines the speed of your animation if i click on this handle right here and i bring it somewhere like, like let's say here it's going to change the way this animation is being handled so let me play it again for you to see you see the difference and if i select this other keyframe then bring this other handle below same idea but with the other keyframe it's also going to affect the animation so when i play this you see it starts with some it starts with a low intensity then it increases as it goes to the next keyframe so that's just the difference but i prefer using this other one i prefer using this second keyframe and bringing the handle somewhere around here it makes a lot of sense and it's just more enjoyable but it all depends on what you're working with and you're going to figure out on which you want to use at the right time so when i play this again you see the difference so the next thing we're going to do is to create a very basic text review using objects and we're going to just use a straight line so before we get started with that i'm going to delete these two keyframes because i'm using the same text layer and i'm going to click on this stopwatch to remove the keyframes as a whole And this is very necessary while animating text graphics in Premiere Pro. So after doing this, I already have the stroke width set to 30, but you can increase this however you want. So let me just increase this to 50% or 50. So let me just increase this to 50. Then next, I'm going to add this up into the own separate group layers. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. So I'll select this text layer click on this to create a group and it's going to be in its own group select this and click on create group then right click rename and call this shape that's just for organization purpose right click rename this and call this text so we have them in their own separate groups so next before we start animating i'm going to add in two effects that's the crop effect and the transform effect so i'm going to still the layer the text layer selected i'm going to open up the effects panel search crop double click to add it 
same thing with transform and when i open up the essential graphics you're going to see the two effects above the two groups that are created so i want to start animating the line graphics so for now i'm just going to add this crop effect inside the shape graphics by dragging and dropping as easy as this so first i don't want this line to be visible at the start so i'm going to select this and make sure that my playhead is at the start of the layer move under effect controls and under the effect controls you're going to find all of the properties that you need to animate on this layer and we have the crop effect right here and with this we have left top right and bottom so for this i want to animate this side i'm going to just drag it to about let's say here and if you notice the right property has been changed from 0 to 75 percent so i'm going to set the first keyframe here or let me even increase this to about let's say let me just say 76 percent so that nothing will be visible make sure that the keyframe is at the very start of the layer i'm going to hold down the shift key Press the right arrow key to move 5 frames at a time. So I'm going to do that 3 times to move 15 frames ahead. Set in the second keyframe. And for the second keyframe, I'm going to select the crop again. Then bring this onto where I see that all of the layer or all of the line is visible. So around here is OK. So that's it for the animation. And again, I'm going to ease this by selecting it up. By selecting this keyframe, open it up then zoom to see it very well then i'm going to bring this handle somewhere around here and it's going to create a smooth animation as the one before so with that i'm going to close this up then the next thing i'm going to be animating is the position of the line so i'm going to use the transform effect for that so i'm going to click on the transform effect make sure that my playhead is at this keyframe here the second keyframe of the crop effect set in the keyframe for the position move ahead and set in the second keyframe and for the second keyframe i'm going to bring this around let's say here that's okay same thing open this up zoom in then i'm going to ease the animation up after doing this i don't want the line to be visible anymore so i'm going to move down to where i see the crop effect again or i can simply click here so i can easily identify it for me i'm going to open it up then i need to set in some keyframes again so i'll set in the same keyframe for the right property so I'll click then move ahead and set in another keyframe and for this keyframe I'm going to bring this back to 100 or let's say 76 as we did for the other set of keyframes then I'm going to right click choose linear right click again here and choose linear because I want to like ease these keyframes on my own for my own taste i think that's okay i'm going to close this up so if i play this animation at the start you see it will come and disappear very easy to do so now we want this text to be reviewed while this line is going downward like so so i know that it starts animating from here which is from the transform effect i know that it starts animating from here going downward to this other keyframe so i need another crop effect to animate the text to follow up the motion to follow up the animation of this line right here so i'll go again under the effect panel and search the crop effect double click to add it then open up the essential graphic drag and drop it inside the text graphics so let me explain why i created these groups so if i had this crop effect let's say around here this will have an effect on both the text and the shape layer and that's not what you want so it will have an effect like so which that's not good so that's why i have it separated in its own groups so if you have multiple graphics that you want to animate like this and it involves text this is the easiest way that you can manipulate your text and animate it easily so with that i'm going to click on this crop effect and then go back and make sure that my playhead is right here where this transform effect is taking place so with this i know that i want to animate the bottom property and for that i'm going to set in the first keyframe for that so i'll set in the first keyframe for the bottom and make sure that this is still selected i'm going to click and drag this so that the text will not be visible so let's say around here and again i can even move this property let me move this transform property to somewhere around here i think this is okay so back to this back to the crop effect i'm going to move ahead same position with the second keyframe of the transform effect so that so both 
times are synced up then i'm going to move this downward so around here where the text is fully reviewed somewhere around let's say here i think this is okay then i as always i'm going to select this keyframe open this up and then i'll ease the keyframe by selecting it and bringing it upward around let's say here so it's i think this would be okay and that's it for the text animation so if i play this you're going to see it as easy as that next we have a text review using a subject in a video so i already have my text and i have the subject which is my laptop so if i bring this right here you see that the text is above the laptop and we want this to be behind it and the laptop should review the text so to do this i'm going to start at the very i'm going to position my player at the very start of the layers and we are going to use masking for this and to create a mask we are going to select the text layer and move up to the effect controls and we locate the opacity and we're going to see that we have some three tools here which are which is used for masking so i'm going to use this free draw bz tool because we are going to create a free mask around this zoom in let's say around here i think this position is okay then i'm going to create a mask covering up the text so for now the text is visible where the mask is but we want the opposite that's why we're going to click on invert so that the text will be visible where the mask is not found so I'll set the first keyframe for the mask path then while holding down shift i'm going to move five frames ahead set in the second keyframe and then make sure that the text handles are visible so i'm going to move these to the right full position which is somewhere around here and i can zoom in again to see it clearly and one other thing i don't like this mask fader so i'm going to set the mask fader value to zero then i'm going to play around with these handles to have an accurate result so i'll just carefully select this point move it right here and select this other point move it right here so that's just the main idea you just have to like keep moving these handles so you have your desired result i'm just going to take this line right here to be my reference point while moving the mask so i'm going to move again then select the mask and move it forward so that the text will be reviewed so i'm just going to do it throughout the entire video then i get back to you guys so i'm done setting up all the keyframes and moving the mask so it depends on your subject that you're working with if you have a subject somehow around there you just have to you just have to add multiple points like this so that you can easily move it forward in time but i think you get the idea on how to create these text review animations using your subject so i'm just going to set this to feed so that we are going to see everything from the start so if i go back and play this you see the perfect animation very smooth and nice and it's very interesting to look at so that's how you can easily create a text review animation using the masking tool in premiere pro and that's it for today's video hope you found the video useful and interesting don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video to support the channel grow thanks for watching and until the next one keep editing